All right, our next module. We're talking about physical methods. So keep in mind we have lots of physical methods. The first being row covers. So this is a picture at the South Farm just showing row covers that have been deployed. You notice how they're being weighted down on the edge. So that's very, very important. Uh, we've done a lot of work with fruit bagging. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to apples, but fruit bagging can be a very effective tool for uh, home fruit production, both uh, apples uh, as well as peaches, uh, and even plastic culture. You know, with those plastic beds are more than just warming the soil, but uh, uh, they're also helping with, with weed control. One thing we've done some work with at the South Farm has been the use of exclusionary netting, particularly for some of the more difficult to control insects organically, like stink bugs. Uh, home gardeners are gonna face some serious problems with the brown marmorated stink bug. And on some of those very prized uh, garden crops at home, such as uh, 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 tomatoes and peppers, that netting may be a very attractive alternative uh, for their control. Hand removal. I mean, some people rolled their eyes when I suggested, but it's a very effective tool, particularly if you're controlling the adults before they have an opportunity to lay eggs. So hand removal, knocking pests into a, a five gallon bucket of, of uh, soapy water can be very, very effective. Uh, removing galls, you know, hand removal of, of, uh, of bagworms. Spraying with a, a strong stream of, of uh, water it tends to wash uh, some of the aphids off the plants. It also uh, uh, can, can help remove some of the spider mites off plants. Trapping. I mentioned trapping earlier. You need to be careful with trapping. Some of the traps that they can purchase from garden centers may increase problems. They may catch lots of pests. You know, we've all heard about Japanese beetle traps, but the brown marmorated stink bug traps that they're now starting to market. We also see heavier damage close to those traps, less damage further away. They do catch a lot of the brown marmorated stink bugs, but they don't catch all of them that are attracted to the traps. And so if they want to use those, they may, they may not want to put it right next to the plants they're trying to protect. You know, put it on, on the other side of the yard to, to try and attract them away from some of those locations. But we have lots of things, you know, slug traps, very effective. Uh, if you're going to use a slug trap, I would recommend using non-alcoholic beer. Uh, it's not the alcohol that's attracting them, it's the other things in there. And the, and the uh, non-alcoholic beer has been shown to be a better attractant than alcoholic beer. So we have pheromone traps. Again, uh, what we're trying to do is attract a certain stage that can tell us when egg laying is going to occur. So we use this to monitor the populations. And so usually we're attracting the males, which do not lay eggs and do not damage the plants. So even if they don't catch every male they bring in, the pheromone, these types of pheromone traps are generally not increasing pest problems. And then we have uh, some uh, soft materials uh, under our chemical controls. Uh, insecticidal soap, horticultural oils, botanical insecticides. Generally these are, are pretty safe uh, for homeowners to use. I encourage them. Uh, some of these can even be used as what I call routine maintenance sprays, you know, the insecticidal soap and, the, and some of the horticultural oils. Uh, these uh, soft materials tend to be less harmful to the environment, safer for the applicator. Uh, uh, home gardeners do not have the same level of training as our commercial growers. They tend to be very specific and uh, uh, less harmful to beneficial organisms as well. And so I, I like the, that group of uh, the very soft materials that I just showed you. Some of the other things we have available, we have the BT sprays. So they're gonna be effective against true caterpillars. The ones that have those pro legs that have the hooks on the undersides of their body. Colorado potato beetle, fungus gnat larvae, 
Now in trust uh, is available to organic producers, but at $500 a container, it, it's, it's not attainable by a lot of home gardeners. They do have the Captain Jack's dead bug brew as an alternative, but it is not organic. It's the same active ingredient, but not organic. Neem oil, neem oil acts as a uh, insect growth regulator as well as a repellent. We've used them to uh, flush Japanese beetles and green June beetles out of peach orchards and they'll usually flush them out for about 48 hours. So they do have a pretty good repellent activity. They also control a number of insects. And pyganic, the natural pyrethrin. Now if they're truly organic home gardeners, they want to make sure that it's a non-synergized version of the pyrethrin. We do have what we call piperonyl butoxide or PBOs and a lot of the pyrethrins are naturally synergized not naturally, they're synthetically synergized to be more effective, but uh, that would make them non-organic. So they just want the pure pyrethrin or pyrethrum sprays. And we also have dormant oils, horticultural oils, insecticidal soaps, and this lists some of the uh, botanical sprays out there. <coughs> 